D from New York here, coming at you with your Monday Night Raw review from this week's show. Now, I have a lot I want to talk about. Um, I'm going to talk about the most important topics of the show. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is this Monday Night Raw seemed to be focused. Okay, It seemed to be focused. Last week's show seemed to be focused. This week's show seemed to be on that same path. Now, the first thing I want to talk about that right off the bat I was completely disappointed in is that John Cena comes back and it's right back to normal for John Cena. All right? There's no selling of a brutal beatdown by Ryback. You know, the man went through the fucking stage at Extreme Rules and then he takes one week off and miraculously he's back to normal and fighting on Monday Night Raw. Something like that needs to be sold over weeks at a time. You know, I know this is WWE, I know it's scripted, I know they have to move on with the storylines, but to create some type of realism, John Cena took one of the most violent, you know, bumps for, for the year 2013. He, he should be selling this move up until the last week before payback, then they should have announced the three stages of hell. That's when they should have announced the three stages of hell. Who the fuck is texting me? Oh, my mother's texting me. She doesn't know I'm recording. But anyway, um, three stages of hell, it was announced regardless. John Cena's back. You know, he had a match with uh, Curtis Axel tonight, which I'll get into after this. But the three stages of hell. Now, if you guys are not fans of the WWE, you, know, you, you probably don't know that there was two prior three stages of hell matches. Now, this is probably, you know, considered up there with the most violent matches that WWE puts on. You got Hell in the Cell, which is a shadow of its former self right now with the whole PG initiative in WWE. It's not the same Hell in the Cell that I grew up watching. And then you got the Elimination Chamber. Elimination Chamber is always great. It's a violent way to put six guys in the cage and uh, you have them fight for that, you know, you know, lucrative WrestleMania spot, uh, which I totally understand. But Three Stages of Hell is something completely different. The last time we've seen Three Stages of Hell was when HBK and Triple H fought in 2002. This was, without a doubt, one of the best matches that I ever seen growing up watching WWE. I'm going to put the link in the description for the full match. And I want you guys to watch this match, okay? Outstanding match. That is what Three Stages of Hell is. The last closing seconds of that match, all right? was a tables, ladders, and chairs match, was the third stage. The stage prior to that was a steel cage. I believe the stage prior to that, the first stage, was a no disqualification match. Now, that's what Three Stages of Hell is supposed to be. Look at the name. Three Stages of Hell. The last closing segments of that Triple H and HBK match, Shawn Michaels went off a 20-foot ladder through four tables to the outside of the ring. That's what hell means to me when you're fighting something like that. What did John Cena propose for Ryback? A lumberjack match, a tables match, and an ambulance match. This does not signify three stages of hell. This is the PG version of three stages of hell, and that's what bothers me about this. You know, WWE could have opened a lot of eyes if they went the old Attitude Era route for once. For once. They want this feud to be memorable. They want this feud to be that physical and violent feud. That's what they need to reference and go back to. That's what they did in the past. An ambulance match, I care. I could care less for. A lumberjack match, I hate lumberjack matches. That that's that's the least. That's the least. Like, who wants to see that? I don't want to see that. You're gonna have fucking twenty clowns, thirty clowns, circling the ring, watching John Cena and Ryback fight for the WWE Championship. That doesn't signify three stages of hell to me. That's just boring to me. So that's, that's the one problem I had with that. Number two, Ryback didn't reference that he wants to be WWE Champion. All he did was, all he did was mention, uh, you know, he comes out and mentions Lucifer and Satan and this and that, and that John Cena is going to be put through hell. That's it. He doesn't reference anything. I'm going to become the WWE Champion. So obviously the WWE title is not important to him. I don't understand that. Anyway, back to John Cena. John Cena was immediately thrust um, into a interview segment with Paul Heyman. Curtis Axel came out at the beginning of the show, and Curtis Axel versus John Cena was booked for the main event of Monday Night Raw. This goes to show you how important this project is to Triple H. Now, he fought Triple H in the main event last week. Now he's in the main event this week against John Cena. He, the, the push is going to be important for him. Triple H is really getting behind this kid. 
and he wants this push to succeed. Now, a lot of people I said last week were disappointed with the ending and Triple H collapsing. It's all about Triple H. He's got a concussion angle going on. It's going to lead to bigger and better things for this angle. We'll find out soon about that because Triple H is going to be on next week's show. He's going to talk about you know his uh, his injury. But the fact that McGillicuddy or Curtis Axel is in the main event last week against Triple H and now John Cena, your WWE champion, should tell you a lot about how WWE is handling his push. He did beat John Cena on a count out because the ambulance came out and you know you know it, it uh, you know it got to Cena's head, so he went to go check the ambulance. He went to go see if Ryback was in the ambulance, but. Axel got the win regardless because of Cena's blunder. So Axel now has wins over Triple H, which I don't think they mentioned that he was counted out. Triple H was counted out, but he did win against John Cena. He beat the WWE Champion by count out because of John Cena's own mistake. It's a win. So now he's got two wins over Triple H and John Cena. Where this goes from here, I don't know. I don't know where Curtis Axel fits in, but they definitely have my attention because he is the son of Mr. Perfect. He is going to be a major player if the WWE handles him correctly, which I am okay with right now. And he's got Paul Heyman behind him. That's all you need to know. On to other things. CM Punk. CM Punk apparently um, is coming back at the Payback pay-per-view in four weeks. Chris Jericho had a segment with Paul Heyman on uh, the the highlight reel. And I, I don't know how to take this or not. But I, I honestly don't believe CM Punk is going to be back. If we see CM Punk on Monday Night Raw before the pay-per-view, then that gives us a clear-cut answer that he will be at the pay-per-view fighting Chris Jericho. The pay-per-view is, is in Chicago, which is a positive thing because the Chicago crowd is just fucking amazing when it comes to WWE pay-per-views, uh, WWE events in general. Um, it is CM Punk's hometown, so that, that may lead to a possibility of him being there. Now, I know CM Punk doesn't want to come back at the Payback pay-per-view. He wants more time off. He wants to relax. He wants to recuperate. He gave his blood, sweat, and tears to the WWE for 434 days of a title reign. Right? He knows he wants the time off. He deserves the time off. I know for a fact from all the news that I've been reading, he wants to come back later in the summer and start a program with whoever. You know, He'll sit down with creative. Paul Heyman will sit down with creative, iron things out, and get his program started. Under CM Punk's terms, CM Punk's CM Punk knows what he wants to do with his contract, uh, not his contract, with his uh, his storylines. All right, but this whole Chris Jericho thing, th- the one thing I do like about this is that he's fighting Chris Jericho. If this does happen, you know, you're not going to bring CM Punk back, um, you know, just randomly and throw him into a meaningless feud. Um, a lot of people said with Brock Lesnar, I don't want to see that. You know, Brock Lesnar is a former UFC champion. The man can literally destroy anybody that he walks paths with on the street. You're not going to beat Brock Lesnar, all right? CM Punk versus Brock Lesnar, that's not realistic to me, okay? Even Triple H versus Brock Lesnar, that's not realistic to me. You know, Triple H can hang uh, hang with Brock Lesnar in the ring, but in a real fight, it, it's not going to happen. And CM Punk is one of the smaller guys in WWE. I, I just don't want to see that. I don't think they'll mesh well together. But with Chris Jericho, CM Punk has a history. CM Punk has a great history with CM Punk, dating back to WrestleMania two years ago for the WWE Championship. All right, This is the, the right feud for him right now if you want to bring him back because the way Chris Jericho sells this angle and the whole segment on Monday Night Raw was fantastic. Where's Punk? What is Punk doing? You know, he walked out on the WWE. I want answers. All right, I'm the best in the world at what I do. I want to know where your so-called best in the world is. I like this. I like where it's going. Um, Paul Heyman, now the only thing that's iffy here is that Paul Heyman has decided to accept this match on Punk's behalf, which I, I don't know how the WWE is going to handle this. I don't know if Punk is really coming back to fight Jericho or if this is leading to Punk turning on Heyman or Heyman turning on Punk because Punk is speaking, uh, Heyman is speaking for Punk. Meanwhile, Punk has not agreed to anything yet. So we really don't know what's going to happen until we watch um, the following weeks to come leading up to the pay-per-view. So that's the only thing that's got my attention here. What's CM Punk going to say about this? But if CM Punk does come back before the payback pay-per-view and show himself on Monday Night Raw and uh, interact with Chris Jericho and Paul Heyman, then he will be at the pay-per-view. But if he's going to be kept off TV uh, until the day of the pay-per-view and something's going to happen at the pay-per-view, um, I-, I really don't know how the WWE is going to go about that. So it's going to be interesting to see. But I like where this is going so far. Jericho, like I said, is the right guy to bring Punk back if they want to bring him back on TV and then build towards something bigger uh, leading to a SummerSlam. 
Now, the Tag Team Championship is the other thing I wanted to talk about. If you guys watch Monday Night Raw on Monday, you will know why I love Tag Team Wrestling. Okay, I was big into Tag Team Wrestling when I was growing up. Demolition, The Heart Foundation, uh, The Rockers, you had Earthquake and Typhoon, you had Money Inc., who was my favorite tag team, who I think is the greatest tag team of all time in the WWE, Ted DiBiase and IRS. Nobody touches them, in my opinion. Greatest tag team of all time. You had the Quebecers. You had the team of uh, um, Owen Hart and Bret Hart at one time. You know, there were so many great tag teams and that the WWE, Legion of Doom, so many great tag teams that the WWE is just turning their back on. And on Monday Night Raw with The Shield versus Kane and Daniel Bryan, Team Hell No, just showed you a glimpse of why... The tag team division needs to be rebuilt in the WWE. That was a match of the year candidate for this year in 2013. Unbelievable match to start the second hour of Monday Night Raw. I, 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 my attention was fully paid on that match because The Shield is the best thing on TV. Daniel Bryan is one of the best wrestlers in the world. And you know, the, the, just the whole way they mesh together as a tag team going against The Shield is just great. Near, great near falls, great action in the ring. Daniel Bryan was, was energetic and, you know, he was just physical in the ring with Shield, Seth Rollins. They have a history going back to Ring of Honor. Um, Roman Reigns is coming into his own in the ring. He's got great ring presence so far. He's only going to get better. You know, it, it's, just, it's just great TV to see these two teams just, you know, go about it on WWE TV. And this is the reason why the tag team division needs to be rebuilt. WWE needs to really sit down put teams together and focus on a tag team division, and they need to do the same thing with the Divas division. Because if they have this kind of talent in the ring on Monday Night Raw showing you why tag team wrestling is great, I don't understand why they won't get behind it. It's just, it's a mystery to me. And now, The Shield won on Monday Night Raw. The Shield is still your tag team champions. They won by pinfall. Daniel Bryan is going to go on his own. You, you, you see the, 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 you know, the cracks in the team of Team Hell No, okay? They're going to go their separate ways. Daniel Bryan's going to go on his own for a nice singles run, I hope. I hope Vince McMahon really gets behind him. I hope Triple H really gets behind him. Kane, you don't know what's going to go on with Kane, but this is what I would do. Kane is going to be so, like, uh, obsessed with beating the Shield. And you had The Undertaker, just a couple of months ago, on SmackDown, you know, get a, a total beatdown by the Shield. They put him through a table. They just, you know, gave him hell on SmackDown when that was in, in London a few months back. The Undertaker was put on the shelf by The Shield. Kane is going to be so obsessed with beating The Shield and getting back those tag team titles, he's going to go to The Undertaker, get The Undertaker back, and fight The Shield at SummerSlam. You don't even need a storyline to be built. It, that that storyline is going to build itself. So I really think the WWE is building towards a Shield versus Kane and Undertaker, a Brothers of Destruction reunion at SummerSlam. If you want to sell SummerSlam, folks, that is the perfect match to build towards SummerSlam for the Tag Team Championship. That would bring... That just the names itself would bring prestige back to the WWE Champion. Undertaker coming back. You don't see him all year fighting for the Tag Team Championship. Just the Undertaker's name, along with Kane, would build that Tag Team prestige to the WWE once again. And who wins that match? I think The Shield's got to win that match. The Shield has to win. You're not going to have The Shield lose all year. They're such a dominant force. It doesn't make sense for The Undertaker to come back just to ruin The Shield's um, you know, hot streak. It's not going to happen, but the match itself needs to happen. Um, the payback pay-per-view seems to be uh, heading in the right direction with proper build. You got Cena versus uh, Ryback in the three stages of hell. You might have a rematch with uh, Team Hell No and The Shield. Kofi Kingston and Dean Ambrose had a great match on, on Monday Night Raw for the U.S. Championship. They may get a rematch at payback. I don't know yet. It's not been announced. But uh, you see the, the development of uh, Fandango, Wade Barrett, and The Miz. That's going to be announced pretty sh shortly, um, I do believe, for a triple threat match at payback. Now, this Fandango character, I don't know what's going on with him, but he's completely lost all my attention. Um, he's doing more theatrics than he is uh, doing in-ring work, and, and that's a mistake. you you, you got to build this guy to be a great in-ring worker, and then the theatrics come second. I don't want to see him dancing on ring, uh, outside ringside uh, with Summer Rae. I don't want to see him uh, getting cheap victories because uh, The Miz is a special referee. No. You know, you, you can't have this happen. Fandango, you got to build around him. you gotta, you got to put him in the ring and show us that he can really work. I've been saying this for weeks, but uh, hopefully we get to see his in-ring work at the pay-per-view. He had some decent matches with, uh, with, with uh, Chris Jericho. Hopefully, um, you know, we see a little bit more of that uh, coming uh, at the payback pay-per-view. But um, that's pretty much all the most important things, guys, that happened on Monday Night Raw. I'll leave the rest of the results down below. Uh, the show was great. There was great action, great wrestling matches, I know. Uh, Sheamus and Randy Orton had a tag team match that was great. 
Um, it, it was just an all-around, very, very focused show. Um, and WWE seems to be uh, on a hot streak right now. You know, they had last week's show, which was great. This week's show, which I thought was great. Hopefully, they can keep it going towards the payback pay-per-view. Get that pay-per-view uh, some attention. Get some buy rates built for that. Uh, if they book everything the right way, this should be a decent um, string of shows leading up to the pay-per-view. And I'm excited about that. So, hopefully, they continue to do that. But, guys, this is the end of the review. I'll be back with your news and rumors this week, as usual, on Friday or Saturday. So, look forward to that. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description if you guys missed my Monday Night Raw and news and rumors for last week. You can click on the links in the description or click on the annotations in the video uh, that you see in front of you right now. But I'm out, guys. I got some shit to do. I got to take care of my grandpa. I go shopping with my mom. But I will be back later this week, guys. Take care. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like. Subscribe. And I'll talk to you soon.